Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're talking kitchens and trends that are dating them. Builders and architects loved to put weird angles in homes back in the day. No element was safe from this obsession and the kitchen island was no exception. In the good old days, they simply couldn't fathom having linear, perfectly rectangular islands. Oh no, at least one corner of the island absolutely had to be angled if you wanted that open concept kitchen. Because what better way to connect your kitchen to the rest of your house than with a perplexing nonsensical angle? There were a lot of variations of the weirdly angled island. Sometimes they were a little shy and they just snipped off the tips of the corners. Sometimes they were triangular islands. And sometimes the whole island itself would be diagonal, creating even more of a dynamic layout. Of course, sometimes the presence of structural elements such as columns or load-bearing walls occasionally influenced the placement of said weird angles. But a lot of the times, I think people just like the novelty of having bizarre diagonal elements in their kitchens. So let's just take a moment to thank the 80s and 90s for that particular trend and move on. Double height counters. Another dead giveaway that your kitchen is a relic from the turn of the century are double height counters. This trend was big in the 90s and actually persisted well into the 2000s when having a standalone center island or peninsula with two different level countertops seemed like the pinnacle of kitchen design. It was thought that two different heights would create distinct areas where people sitting at the bar could hang out in the kitchen, but not be directly involved in the main cooking activities. So the food prep area was like segregated from the other people that were in the vicinity. Part of the appeal of this arrangement was that you could also hide the mess on your counter from your guests while you were cooking and entertaining. I know there are still a lot of people that like the dual height counter, but I think that generally they make a kitchen look smaller and feel much more boxed. In. And I much prefer the newer tendency to have islands and peninsulas all on one level with the rest of the kitchen's work surfaces. I think it's more functional, it's more streamlined, and actually encourages a more sociable atmosphere. Double basin kitchen sinks. There was a time and a place for double basin sinks, and in my opinion, that time has passed. One of the primary intended purposes of double bowl sinks was to streamline dishwashing by hand. So you'd have one basin with the soapy water for washing the dirty dishes and the other basin, which you'd use for rinsing. With the advent of this thing called the dishwasher, we no longer have this need. Literally the only things I ever need to wash by hand are the large things that don't fit in the dishwasher. And you know what doesn't make washing large things easy? A double basin sink. The other argument in favor of the double basin sink is that you can better separate foods or tools that are at risk of contaminating other foods. So you have the possibility of segregating different types of activities to maintain cleanliness and hygiene. Again, with the boxed in segregation of kitcheny tasks. Why complicate matters with unnecessary duplication? With two separate sinks, tasks can become needlessly complicated as you have to move between them, creating an awkward and fragmented work experience. Single basin sinks, on the other hand, provide a seamless and continuous work surface, allowing for a smoother workflow and easier cleanup. If you feel like you need your sink to be more than just a simple basin, then I think it's worth mentioning that there are plenty of really elaborate sink solutions nowadays. Many of them utilize a large single basin sink as a base, and then they have like a bunch of accessories like cutting boards and additional removable bins and drip racks and things like that. I frankly find some of them a little overcomplicated Complicated, but if it works for you, you can check those out. Before blindly installing a double sink, first question whether or not the double basin is actually useful for the way you typically use your kitchen. Glass tile backsplashes. I'm specifically referring to the thin rectangular glass tiles, which were often staggered and came in very high contrasting colors. Like for example, dark brown paired with lighter tans and beiges or black, gray and white or various shades of blue. I feel that the repetitive pattern can overwhelm a kitchen space and create a sense of visual fatigue. A backsplash like this doesn't give your eye anywhere to rest. This type of tile also lacks design versatility, meaning that it makes them less flexible when it comes to adapting to changing design trends. The only thing that looks more dated than having a kitchen backsplash like this one is when it's paired with crazy busy granite countertops, which brings me to the next dated kitchen trend, 
busy backsplashes paired with busy countertops. Why did we ever think it was a good idea to match busy backsplashes with busy counters? <laughs> Mixing patterns can look absolutely amazing. I am not against it. But pairing dark, super busy granite patterns with a million tiny little multicolored tiles, it was just too much. Now, no judgment here, I'm just making observations, but if you've got this combination in your kitchen and you agree that it looks dated, but you're not sure how to deal with it, then consider replacing one of the busy patterns with something more neutral and toned down so that there isn't this constant competition going on. The least expensive way to do this is to use tile paint on the backsplash. I'm not sure how well peel and stick tiles would work on top of other tiles. Some say it works, some say it doesn't. I've never done it, so I don't know. But that's also something that you could try. Now, as for the counters, I know some would say to use contact paper. I've said it before, but I don't think this generally looks very good. But if you can pull it off, then absolutely that could be a solution for you. These solutions can definitely tide you over while you're waiting to make more permanent or expensive changes. The Tuscan themed kitchen. The Tuscan themed kitchen was all the rage 20 odd years ago. North American Tuscan themed kitchens were made up of lots of heavy, ornate wooden cabinetry, an abundance of unnecessary arches, corbels, and crown molding, really fancy countertop edges, wrought iron accents, and oil-rubbed bronze hardware. The decor often involved roosters and paintings of wine. I mean, when you take the individual elements of the North American version of the Tuscan kitchen, they're not all that different from an authentic country kitchen you'd find in Tuscany. The key difference, though, is that all the materials used in the North American version were new, whereas the materials that you'd find in a villa in Tuscany would be several hundreds of years old. All of these new materials combined together all at once was like Tuscany on steroids. So what you ended up with was kind of a cheesy replica that looked like it kind of belonged in a themed casino in Vegas. I would suggest we leave the rustic Tuscan kitchens in Tuscany and never speak of this trend again. Overhead pot racks. I actually remember seeing this for the very first time in the mid 90s as a tween at a friend's house and I did think it was very cool. I can appreciate the thinking behind the overhead pot rack. You've got everything right there and ready to go while you work your culinary magic. But personally, I think it can look quite cluttered and I'd just rather have pendant lights over my island. And realistically, this look only really works if your pots and pans look impeccable at all times. If the bottoms of your pots and pans are crusty and look like this, then the look doesn't quite work so well. It's like underscore Sophie Wheeler said on Howes 11 years ago. If you have a tall ceiling with a very bright kitchen with lots of additional artificial lighting and hang the rack almost too tall to use, then it can be a nice decorative element if you have thousands of dollars worth of gorgeous copper pots that you keep maintained. Couldn't agree more. It was another one of those unrealistic trends that looked nice but were not functional for most people, like the current open shelving trend, which is not functional, and nobody will ever convince me otherwise. Kitchens these days are definitely more about concealed and bespoke storage solutions and keeping an uncluttered space, so the overhead pot rack doesn't really fit in with the contemporary kitchen philosophy. If you really want to keep a few of your pots and pans easily accessible, then you could try hanging a few of your very favorite on a rail, on your wall, or on your backsplash. Before I go, let me know in the comments what is one thing that you always notice in kitchens that you think looks dated. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!